So guys, I thought I'd do a quick, very, very technical devlog for you. Maybe you'll find it interesting, maybe not. Let me know in the comments below if you like those deep dives. I, it's definitely not a tutorial. <laughs> I'm still figuring out your stuff and doing some research and debugging and who, yeah, it's very complex to get those nodes basically here working. These are custom nodes implemented in C++ with dynamic pins. That's very, very, very interesting. So if for example, this node here, let me make it a little bit bigger, let me zoom in. We have here the U property system as well, and we can change the input pins and then compile it again. And yeah, you need to implement almost anything like the pins here, how they can be handled. You can implement, I would say, every logic you really want. And then you basically get called when those nodes are getting compiled from this button here. And yeah, it's a bit crazy because you write C++ code, which gets again compiled by the Blueprint compiler, and then it will be stored in yeah, in a binary format. That's <laughs> it, it's a kind of mind blowing. And yeah, let me show you or explain you a little bit more what I'm currently working on. I'm trying to implement a publish and subscriber system. So something like this here, which can send messages from one, in my case, every U object, which can be you are or which is based on a blueprint or even in C++ as well, then it will send those information to a storage. Here it's, it's an event bus. And then there will be some listeners or subscribers which then react on those uh, information if they are sent across the system. And this really will simplify a lot of my uh, gameplay systems because I'm currently having the issue that I have a camera volume where the player can enter and then I will have a different camera view or so and I need to set up the camera system but the camera system is attached on the controller which is attached on the pawn and which is controlled by the player so it's <laughs> uh, it gets it gets very quickly very complicated if you work with interfaces there and then I found out that Lyra is using something similar as well and found that somebody already put this code on GitHub. So it's basically this node here, which you can use and you can say, oh yeah, I want to send data from this channel here. That's a gameplay tag. And I want to use this data structure. So it can be every struct which you can create in C++ or in the editor with blueprints. And then you basically just select this gameplay tag and then you say is it an exact match so it's basically the last one the enumerator here or not and then if the yeah message is received you will get called on this on message received pin and then you can do there a lot of stuff with it if you want and here you will basically get the payload that's that's a structure you get and yeah to implement this node here we can use the k2 node base class in unreal engine it's very complex <laughs> trust me because yeah it, as i said it's a bit weird because you write c plus code which gets then basically compiled again for blueprint and yeah there i'm still figuring out stuff because there is a lot of stuff but also not so much stuff <laughs> it really depends what you want to achieve there are many nodes in the engine which you can read but this, arc this article here really helped me to get the frameworking. So basically the first steps here, the guy is creating uh, or, or is using the reflection system of Unreal Engine to set specific yeah, properties of this data storage here. So that can be an actor or so. And then you can yeah, say, oh yeah, I want to set this integer value. I want to set this Boolean. I want to set this string or so and give it a name here. It's very interesting. And then here on the end, you will get a, a wildcard as well you, where you can read the data. And yeah, as we have already seen, something is available for Lyra, but here I did not like that we don't can connect delegates or custom events. Sure, we can call the custom event, but it's, 
it's not how I want to work. I want to use delegates here to get basically a callback structure. So when we receive something, we want to get called back. And there I found this system here that's also on GitHub. I will provide all the links in the description below of the video. And you can use this as well to bind events. I think it was here on the top or so here. So you can say, I want to listen on this gameplay tag and I want to receive the data here. What I did not like here is that it's using the wildcard property stuff and it's a custom structure. So I, I would be limited on the data types there. I want to use the plain structures which we create in the C++ world or in the Blueprint world. So it should be across both systems. Sure, if we have a Blueprint structure which we want to send to C++, that might us get some headaches, but it's also possible with the reflection system, but it might be very complex. So that, that's the thing, but what I liked and, and did not like, also in the Lyra system, on the Lyra plugin, it's a plugin, which you can get from the learning tab as well, is that we using subsystems. Let me quickly search if we can subsystem Unreal Engine. Programming with subsystems. I will provide the link here as well for you guys. So if you want to read about it, you can do it. I think it was this one that was very interesting. So we already have some subsystems like the game instance or local player stuff. And yeah, I will now create a combination basically of those APIs, which we have seen before. I'm very far already for this short amount of time, for example. If I click here, we can use the U property system as well. And I can say, I, I want to have a function call. So here I can create a function and give, give it a name. Or I want to use delegates. And here you can connect this delegate here. And then of course the structure will go away, which we can select here as well, like in the Lyra stuff. So we can say phone chain. This is, these are C++ structures and this is a blueprint structure. And then for example, you can say, oh yeah, I want to create an event dispatcher. Then you can say, oh yeah, I want to connect this event here, compile, and then it will call the, this event here. So let me move this away. And then you can do your stuff and as, as we see, we get a pin, which is basically the data structure. And here we can directly say break. So yeah, those, those K in two nodes are very complex, but super flexible. You can do so much stuff with it, really. Also, what we will see, let me see if, we, if this is already working. No, it's not. Wait, <laughs> I need to unconnect this pin here. Compile again. It's not that stable yet, but in the end it will be very stable. Not usually. I'm still working on stuff. Yeah. And here you will see if we click on the node that we can see the data structure here, which is used. So you can do so much stuff with it, really. Or you could also connect, not, <laughs> not like this. We could connect this one here and say, come on and say that you want to create a matching function. That's also working, create a matching function. No, that was an event, sorry. Create matching function. Then you will create this one here and you get, will get, get, get called back here. And I will provide something similar for C++ as well, as well so, that I'm ver so that I'm very flexible when it comes to developing stuff. Again, function very interesting the name so yeah that that's what i'm working on so this is basically here i think the receiver node is more complex than the sender node there you can select the well as well a gameplay tag and say i want to yeah, say make phone constraint structure mm. This one here. No. It was the wrong one. Make phone constraint. Did I 
this, this one here. And then you can basically connect this one here as well. Compile later. And then we will see that here we can connect basically every structure because this pin here is a wildcard as well. So it sets every structure and then we can work with it. Kind of like we do in C++ with template parameters and the deduction rules. That's so interesting that we can do something similar as well in blueprints or for blueprint developers if we write the C++ code for them. But yeah, that might be very complex. And yeah, that's what I'm currently working on. I really hope that you like those deep dives. As I said, let me know in the comments below if you like to see more or less. <laughs> then I will stop posting such videos. But I always like to share some features which I use for game development. So maybe you want to use them as well. So it's called K2 nodes. Very interesting. And it really simplifies the work later with blueprints for me. That's why I spend some time here to develop some tools. And then I can send data or structures across the systems. And yeah, it's transparent. So basically those two nodes don't know the exact structures. And also as I'm using gameplay tags, the sender side or the receiver side does not know anything about the left or right side. So yeah, I would say I'm pretty done now with this video. See you in the next one.